Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Human Settlements, Water and Sanitation Minister Lindiwe Sasulu this week acknowledged the challenges facing the Water and Sanitation Department. Natasha Wendell tells us more. Hi Natasha. Hi. What challenges did the Minister outline in her budget vote speech? Well, she basically unpacked a department that is untransformed with a bleak future ahead of it if it did not have any specific strategies in place to deal with it. She admits that there are, have been gross failings by the department. Um, she outlined the aging infrastructure that they're having issues with, um, over-reliance on co uh, costly consultants, um, poor water management, um, and amongst those, uh, shortage of technical staff, um, big water infrastructure backlogs, um, there was non-compliance of mines that she's mentioned when in uh, their water licenses. She wasn't very specific on where that was, but she just made a general point of it. Um, vandalism and theft of infrastructure is becoming a big problem at the moment, um, as well as non-payments of services, which is stretching into billions of rands. And amongst that, the department has been plagued by serious allegations of mismanagement of finances, um, there's a lot of corruption allegations going along um, and this has been quite a huge financial burden on the department itself. But the minister has like, outlined saying that she has got a strategy in place. They've been delving deep into many of these problems. They're looking at what solutions that, can, well, that they can actively now implement and she says they have a workable, feasible plan and that they're actually going to start working on it now. How does she plan to deal with the corruption within the department? Well, currently the corruption obviously has um, placed a lot of strain on the department's um, st and the staff's morale. So what is currently going on away now is investigations. The department is actually looking into each, looking into vetting each um, employee that they have over there, clearing the ones that, that have been cleared of any wrongdoing um, that are actually innocent in this fact to try and boost morale a bit. She says that this corruption allegations are actually, it's, it's making the department more dysfunctional in the sense that it's, it's causing huge financial strain as well, but also in the sense that it's demotivating the staff. So with these investigations that are underway, um, they will be fast-tracked, she says, and she'll, they'll conclude them as quickly as possible to actually move forward from this. One strategy the department does aim to do is um, appoint a national treasury approved partner to investigate or to deal with all outstanding investigations, um, look at all the drawn out cases that have been under investigation for, for a long time and then study the reports of the Auditor General um, and ensure that all investigations have followed through consequences to try and tackle anybody who has actually had problems with corruption in the department. Also, if needed, she says, they will actually um, appoint forensic investigators um, to assist and identify where there may be loopholes in the systems as well, to, and to then to try and close those loopholes. All projects that have been blocked previously are going to start being reviewed, um, and then she's going to look at the tendering process as well um, to try and see where any loopholes can be closed with that, because that has also been identified as a major problem within the department. How does she propose to deal with the funding challenges facing the department? That might be a little bit more difficult at the moment. There aren't really any clear strategies in place to try and deal with it. Um, they have been given a budget of 16.4 billion this year. Um, of that, uh, 3.6 billion is being um, allocated as conditional grants to local government. Uh, two billion is allocated to the water services infrastructure grants and the regional bulk infrastructure grant as well. Um, the problem is they're heading into the year in a def deficit of 1.7 billion from the previous financial year. So it's accruals and payables that they're facing at the moment. Um, they are spending about 42 billion a year on infrastructure alone and to actually bring our infrastructure up to scratch, it's, it's estimated to cost 13 billion for sanitation alone. Um, and um, they are also facing a lot of uh, infrastructure bills as well. I mean, it's 42 billion a year that goes into water infrastructure. It's it's 3, 13 billion alone that goes into sanitation. But overall, the department needs 90 billion a year to bring our infrastructure up to scratch. 
um, and with a budget of 16.4 billion, it's, it's they just can't stretch it further. So the department is actually engaging National Treasury about a two billion budget for shortfall, and um, that's impacting the critical uh, projects at the moment. There's plans in place to discuss with the financial manage, uh, minister um, about possibly funding or partnering with the private sector to receive to revive specific dam projects um, that aren't actually in the allocated budget at the moment and see if, if there's any certain leeway that they can get by doing that. Now, in addition to that, the department is actually looking at trying to put measures in place when it comes to the municipal debt that they're facing at the moment. I think the last figure they placed that it was 14 billion from municipalities that they needed to obtain. Um, so they're actually looking at ways of getting that debt to be serviced, even if it's through the grants um, or any of the allocations that are set aside for the municipalities. And then have the National Treasury monitor payments by, municip uh, by the municipalities itself. The Minister also hinted at possible new legislation. What will this entail? Okay, There is not much detail here. The Minister has hinted at new legislation that she wants to put in place soon. Um, a new bill that would transform the sector legislation that would help with the conservation of water and obviously water use. Um, while there aren't any specifics in place, she has reiterated the importance of the water use that, uh, that we have in South Africa. So I'm assuming that would have something to do with how the water is distributed or how the use or how much restrictions we have across the board. Um, also with the transformation of the sector, she's very disappointed at how little the sector has transformed in the past two decades. Um, so she wants to put in place something that can kind of direct that a little bit better, probably possibly more seamlessly. Um, in terms of our actual national assets, she's looking at requesting cabinet to declare all major dams national key points, which she believes would help uh, the department manage um, the sector a lot better. And she wants to try and establish a regulator, um, which has been on the, it's been discussed for a while now, a water regulator to manage both state and privately owned water resources and any assets across South Africa. This is to optimize the water distribution in a fair manner, which is she's quite insistent on, and pretty much place the country's water resources as a strategic asset going forward. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.